Hi, this is Larissa with Kintone Customer Success, and today we're going to review how to set up process management in an app. Process management allows you to create a workflow where multiple users can take action on an item. Common uses include a document review cycle or an expense review and approval process. This video will go in depth on the planning and steps to set up your workflow. By the end, you'll have all the tools you need to successfully set process management in a Kintone app. So let's get started. If you're brand new to process management, I highly recommend testing out a simple pre-built workflow using the shared to-do app in the Kintone Marketplace. To add it, just click plus next to apps, search shared to-do, click add this app and add. This is a great start to get used to status placement, assigning, and how to use the buttons once it's enabled. Today you'll learn how to set up process management settings for a document request app. In this app, anyone can make a request for a document. So once it's submitted, someone can either begin the request and continue to create, reject the request, put the request on hold for later, or return to the submitter for more info on what's needed. This workflow will eventually lead us to a completed or rejected request. First, always plan out your workflow ahead of time so you know the exact steps you'll need to add to the process management settings. For each step, you're going to need to know status. This will indicate the current status of the record. Assignee. This is the user who is allowed to take the actions. One or more assignees can be set for each status. An action. This refers to the operation of changing the status of the record. So what will need to happen for the assignee to change the record to the next status? When you're first getting started with process management, it's easiest to give yourself a visual of your workflow. This will speed up the setup and alleviate any possible confusion as you're learning the steps. First, determine the basic statuses for your workflow. Add arrows to note next steps and if any statuses will ever need to revert back to a previous step. Next, add in your assignees. At each status, who will be in charge of completing it and moving it on to the next stage? Lastly, we'll add in our actions. This is the name of the button options that will be available to the assignee in the status before. This is simply the text that will display on the button. With our completed workflow, once a record is saved, it reads, the current status is not started and is assigned to the person who created the record. The only option they have is to click the button request. Once clicked, that status is request in queue and is assigned to Larissa. Larissa then has the option to accept the request and begin working on it. From there, Larissa will have the option to complete or reject the request, or she can simply reject the request, which completes the flow, put the request on hold for a later time. From there, Larissa can reopen the request and go to the already created status in progress and complete that workflow, or choose to reject the request immediately to complete the workflow that way. Lastly, she can decide she doesn't have enough information to move forward and can send the request back to the person who created the record for more details. From there, the person who created the details will update the record and push it back to Larissa to make the final decision on how to move forward again. From your app, click the drop down next to the gear wheel, hover over general settings and select process management. First, we'll enter our statuses in section two. I've pre-added the status names here, but these are just all of the yellow boxes in our workflow diagram. Next, we'll start building the flow. The initial status after a record is saved is not started. And it's gonna be assigned to the person who created the record. This middle portion here is for setting branch criteria, which allows you to display certain buttons 
based on another condition in the record. For our current flow, branch criteria isn't needed, but I'll review this a little later on. Per our flow, the only option the record creator has is to click the button Request. So we'll add that button name in here. Next, you select the status of the record after the creator submits the request, which will be Request in Queue. We finished the first portion of our workflow. Next, we'll set up the next portion by adding a new row and selecting Request in Queue. When a request is in queue, it needs to be assigned to Larissa. So we will enter Larissa here. Next, you need to add in all the button options Larissa has to move it forward to the next status. Per our flow, Larissa has four different routes to take this record. So let's add four rows to specify the buttons. She can click the button, accept the request. Which goes to a status of in progress. Or she can do reject request which will go to a status of request rejected. She can choose to put on hold, which will go to a status of request on hold. And then lastly, need more info. And then the status would be updates in progress. So next we're gonna add another row and complete the flow for each status that we just set one by one. Let's start with in progress. This will be assigned to Larissa again. The only options we'll have from here are to click the button, reject request, which goes to a status of request rejected, or we can click complete, which will go to a status of request complete. So next there was the option to reject request. However, since rejecting the request is one of the possible ends to the workflow, you don't need to add an extra row because there are no steps after rejecting the request. So next we'll move on to request on hold. And this is also going to be assigned to Larissa. The options from here will be to either reopen the request and go back to a status of in progress or to reject the request which will go to a status of request rejected and will complete the flow. So lastly, we need to add the options for when we pass it back to the requester to make updates. So we'll need to select updates in progress. The assignee is going to be the person who created the record. So you can assign unique users per record by using the user group or department selection fields, as well as the default created by and updated fields. So for this, we'll send it back to the user identified as created by. From here, that user will only have the option to mark the record as details updated, and push it back to request in queue. When you have a lot of statuses, you may miss a step. To be sure we have all of our sections set up, we'll add a new row and select the drop down status. The only statuses that should remain are those that are going to end the workflow. So in our case, that would be request completed or request rejected. So since those are the only two options here and those are completions of our workflow, we are all set. We did it correctly and added in all of our statuses and we can delete this test row. 
So we've successfully set up our document request process management workflow. Now that we've reviewed the basic setup for process management, let's take a look at additional features by adding multiple assignees and setting branch criteria. When selecting assignees for a particular status, you can select more than one person to take action. To do this, simply add the user group or department name or selection field from the dropdown. Next, you'll need to determine the requirements from each assignee for the process to move forward. You can choose user chooses an assignee from the list to take action. This allows the current assignee to choose which user to pass it on to next. All assignees in the list must take action. This requires everyone in the assignee list to take action before it is passed to the next step. Or one assignee in the list must take action, which means anyone in the assignee list can take action. And once one person does, it moves to the next status. Now let's review branch criteria, which allows you to display certain buttons based on another condition in the record. For this app, although I'm the person who reviews and works on the content, I also wanna use this app to track my own document request to keep everything in one place. With the current flow, I'll need to submit it to myself to accept the request. That step isn't really necessary for me though, so let's add branch criteria to skip request in queue and go straight to in progress for requests that I create. For this, we'll have two paths. It is not created by Larissa and therefore needs to run the regular path to be put in queue, or it is created by Larissa and can go straight to in progress. Let's go back to our settings and add another section for branch criteria. So in the top box, created by does not include any of Larissa. Then the button should be request to go into a status of request in queue. For the second section, if created by includes Larissa, then I'll have the button option to begin request, and it's gonna go right into a status of in progress. Another great way to use branch criteria is if we had a drop down for document type. So maybe if it's an email request, it goes to one person, and if it's a video request, it goes to another. So this branch criteria feature really lets you customize the flow to your specific needs. So when your workflow is completed and you're ready to launch, just make sure to enable process management at the top, click save, and update your app. We went through a lot today, but I'm confident you'll be building successful workflows in no time. Thanks for watching this walkthrough of process management in Kintone.